Hi, it's Beefy. Happy New Year and Happy Year of the Tiger. I hope 2022 has been good for you so far. Today we're going to be exploring Penrose Triangles. Penrose Triangles are also known as Impossible Triangles or Tri-Bars. They were first created by graphic artist Oscar Reusser fired in 1934, so I don't know why they're named after the mathematician Penrose. Who knows? I posted some Impossible Triangles to Instagram and I got a lot of response and I was even asked how I made them. So this is what I'm going to show you today. I've been exploring optical illusions and how to build them in Cinema 4D and I came across a stylized version of the Impossible Triangle built in Houdini. The only takeaway I got from that tutorial was how to build the spline. The rest was very specific to Houdini. It looked complicated and math was involved. Math isn't one of my strong points. So saying that, I thought I'd try and make this in Cinema 4D, which is a completely different process. I'll leave a link in the description for the Houdini tutorial which is on the channel called No Flow. I had to figure out a complete workaround on how to create the impossible triangle. It wasn't as straightforward as I thought, so I had to fall back on our old friend the most spline. In this tutorial there's a small amount of modelling and we'll be covering some other tools, in particular the world tool, and we'll be covering how to cut geometry using the spline and the line cut tool. Then we'll be texturing the impossible triangle using the default UVW mapping in the material tag. I'm making a follow-up tutorial and in that one I'll be showing you how to roll a ball and move any other objects along the surface of the impossible triangle. And I'll be popping into Redshift and I'll show you how I lit my scene. I'll also show you how to render out a crypto pass and how to composite this in After Effects, so watch out for that one. In this tutorial I'll be using Cinema 4D R25, but you can make this in pretty much any version. My interface will look different if you're using a different version of Cinema 4D. I'm going to run through some quick differences in my interface, so this tutorial is pretty much intermediate. If you know your version of Cinema 4D and how to access tools, you should have no problem in following along. But before we crack on, I would like to take the opportunity to welcome new viewers. If this is your first time here, then this is a place where I post tutorials, tips and other stuff. I'm just sharing the knowledge that I picked up along the way, hopefully it will help you in the future. If you're into Cinema 4D, After Effects, Illustrator and the like, then why not subscribe today and tinker that notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. You have nothing to lose. And a big shout out for everyone who's subscribed and liked my videos. You guys are awesome. So without further ado, let's dive into this. Okay, so I'm in Cinema 4D and there's a couple of things I need to point out. And the first is that I'm using Cinema 4D R25 and this is the new interface. And it's an interface that I really, really love and I'm going to be sticking with this from now on and I'm not going to be swapping backwards and forwards just for the sake of tutorials who work in the old interface. I'm going to be using this interface for the future and I'm going to be using this interface for my work. So this is all about muscle memory. I don't want to be going backwards and forwards because that would just confuse me. Okay, so I just want to point this out just in case you're wondering where the hell my mouse is going on the screen because this is going to be different to the version of Cinema 4D that you're using. Okay, so saying that, I'm just going to jump in and show you the differences here. Okay, the major difference is I've got this massive workspace here now and everything's all tidied up. So I have my material manager up here that's hidden away. I don't need to see my materials all the time. So that makes sense there. And also I have my dope sheet is all set down here in the bottom here. So that's pretty cool. I really like that. So the next thing is that all my tools now are on the left hand side. So the spline tools aren't in the spline folder anymore. So over here we have the spline folder and we just got the rectangle, flower, star, etc. All that's in here. But now the pen tool is now on this side over here. OK, so that's one of the major differences, but also it depends on what mode I'm in. So if I'm in point mode, I get these extra tools here and these are relevant to the mode I'm in. So I've got like the line cut tool, weld, etc. here. These are grayed out at the moment because I haven't got anything in my object manager. This will change for whatever mode I'm in. OK, so this is my toolbar that's on the left hand side. And also I have my mode bar at the top here. So this is my points, edge and polygon model object animation etc i've also got my snap tool and quantizing up here everything i need for my modes is up here 
on top of my interface. And now on the right hand side, I have my objects. And this is right next to the object manager, which makes a lot of sense now. So this kind of makes this a really good design because I have like a larger screen here and I have more room to play with. So the second thing is that I'm going to be I'm going to be selecting my tools from the left hand side and in prior versions of Cinema 4D you're not going to have that option. So you can do this usual theme which is shift C brings up a search mode and then you can type whatever you need in here and then you can just dock it into your interface so you're ready for the tutorial. So what you need to do is look for the world tool and the line cut tool and dock them into your interface and that will save you some time down the line. Okay, so that being said, we're going to crack on here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a spline and this spline is going to be the basis for our Penrose triangle here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create two cubes and these are going to be my guides to make my spline. So I'm going to bring a cube into my composition here. And I'm going to make sure that my display is on ground shading and lines. And I'm going to keep the size as it is. So it's going to be 200, 200, 200. And if I come to my segments here and I select all of these, and I want two segments in the X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to enter two into one field, hold control and enter, and that fills in all these fields at the same time. Now I have four segments on each face there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this cube. So I'm going to hold down control and drag this out. And I'm going to come to the coordinates and I'm going to select the X, Y, and Z here. Same thing, I'm going to enter 200 centimeters into the X, control enter, and that fills in all the fields there. So now I have my two cubes, and this is my guide to create my spline. So I'm going to make these editable. I'm going to select them both, press C, and if I come up here, I'm going to select my live selection tool, and now I'm going to come into edge mode and I can select my edges like so. So I'm just going to hold down shift and select each of these edges. Okay, so this is what I need here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to edge to spline. And now I've got two splines that I need here. And I'm just going to delete my cubes. I don't need to see them anymore. So now I've got my spline here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a camera. And this camera here, I'm going to come into the object here and I'm going to come to projection and I'm going to select isometric. So if I come into my camera now, everything disappears off the screen here. So Everything's down here to the right at the bottom. So I'm just going to drag this over like so. And just come in here a little bit. So now we have our triangle. I'm going to come to the filter. I'm going to turn off my work plane and I'm going to turn off my world axis. So now you can see that we have our equilateral triangle there. And this is what we need. If I select the splines here and I right click and come down to connect objects and delete. We've now made one object here, but we've still got two splines. If I just come into my view here, I'm just going to get rid of this camera. I'm, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm just going to hide it from the viewport. So I'm going to hold down alt and double click the traffic lights and that's gone now. So this might be one object, but we've still got two splines here. So if I come into point mode and I get the rectangle selection, I'm going to make sure visible only is switched off. And I'm going to come to this corner here. If I select that. So if you come to the HUD here, it says there are two points 
and that's because these haven't actually been joined together. So the way we're going to do that is with the weld tool. So I'm just going to select the weld tool and this is still highlighted here and I'm just going to click on here. And if I get my rectangle selection again, make that selection that we have now one point at that corner. So that's exactly what we need there. Okay, so I'm just going to pull out here a little bit so we can see the whole spline. And I've got like sharp corners here. I just want to round these off. So what I'm going to do is control A, I'm going to select all the points and then right click and come to chamfer. And by default, this is five centimeters. I want to change this to 45. I think that's what I had in my previous examples. I'm going to click apply and now I have my curved corners there. We come back into the camera. You can see now that we have our curved corners. And you can also see that this is where the start and end points are. And they've looked like they've joined together because of the camera projection. This is still the same shape as we had before. So we're not actually making the geometry, we're just making an optical illusion that the camera here in the isometric mode is going to help us trick the viewer thinking that we've made an impossible triangle. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to add some geometry around here. So I'm just going to bring in a sweep. So I'll bring in a sweep object. I'm going to just bring it down here. Bring the spline underneath. I'm going to change the name of the spline and I'm going to call it Penrose Spline. And now I need an object to sweep along this spline. So I'm just going to create a rectangle and I'm just going to make this 50 by 50. And now I'm just going to drop that in between the two. I'm going to select the rectangle and the Penrose spine. I'm going to drop that into the sweep. And now we have this shape and it's an interesting shape. I like that, but for what we want, these ends here don't match up. And that's because the sweep is banking this around the spline. So we don't want that to be like that. So I'm just going to come into the sweep and I'm going to turn off banking. And now we've got another problem. These ends are really messed up. And the only way I could sort this out was actually use a Mo spline. So I'm just going to come into the Mo graph menu here and I'm going to select a Mo spline. And I'm just going to bring this down here. I'm going to bring the Penrose spline out. And with the most spline selected, I'm going to come to the object tab. And in the mode, I'm going to make sure that I'm in spline. It's exactly the same as the older versions of Cinema 4D. It just looks a little bit different now. Okay, so I'm just coming to the spline tab. And I'm looking for a source spline here. So I'm just going to take the Penrose spline and drop that in. And now the most spine has adopted the position and shape of the Penrose spline here. Okay, so now I'm going to drop that into the hierarchy of the sweep. And now we have geometry that's wrapped around the spline there. So I'm not going to be using the width and height of the rectangle here to make this thicker. I'm just going to be using the most spline. And I'm just going to come to the spline tab and I'm just going to increase the width to 25. I think that's what I had in my previous examples. And now we have the shape that we want. The end and start point are now lined up perfectly. And this is exactly what I want there. I'm going to turn off the display for the spline here. So if I come to the display mode in the object tab, and I'm just going to change that to line and I'm going to come to the sweep here and I'm going to turn off the caps. We don't need them. Okay, so if I come to the most spline here and come to the spline tab, um, the generation mode, I've got it in vertex at the moment, but you can use count even a step. But if you use count and I've got like a hundred there, 
these aren't even that looks really kind of messy to me and stuff and that so even when you come into even you think that they're going to be evenly spaced out but if you increase the count here you can see that these aren't even even though that says even that's a bit of a mouthful there so you can use step and you can say that i want to point at every step but i'm just going to stick with vertex i'm just going to use vertex because it works really well for this project and what the vertex does it takes the information from our spline so we come into our spline here and we can see that where the type is bezier and the intermediate points are adaptive i don't want them on adaptive i want this to be uniform and now if i increase the points to 100 so you can see now that we have these tighter polygons on the curve here and this is exactly what we want so what's going to happen is if i just pull out here and just explain this is that this top face here is the only face that we're going to be using from this model and this face here is going to be joined to a copy of that face and it's going to be twisted around into this position here and this is going to match up here so we've got to make sure that this is an almost perfect curve it's never going to be perfect but this amount of intermediate points in uniform mode is going to give us that nice curve there okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to name the sweep and i'm going to call this penrose geo okay so penrose geo and i'm just going to right click and i'm going to say current state of object and so now we have our copy here i'm just going to pull that right down here i'm going to create a null and i'm going to call this null archive and i'm just going to hold alt and i'm going to click the traffic lights a couple of times so that anything we drop in here isn't going to be seen in our viewport or in our render okay so i'm just going to take the sweep here i'm going to drop that into the archive and i'm going to take the penrose spine and we'll drop that into the archive as well and it's going to close that up so now we just got our penrose geo here that we just created i'm going to get rid of all these selection tags here okay so now i can just change the display and just put that back to grail shading and if I come into our model mode here, you can see this is panning out quite nicely. This is looking quite nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the Penrose Geo and I'm going to come into the polygon mode. And if I get the live selection tool here, and I'm just going to select all of these polygons here. I'm just going to come down slowly. We don't want to miss any come down to this corner here and if i just come right in here you can see that these get really really tight so i'm going to hold down shift and i'm going to select down here i'm going to come right in here hold down shift and there's just one more that we need to get and that's that okay so for the material animation this is all you need but if you want to animate a ball along this surface here i'm going to make a few more i'm going to select some more polygons and the reason being is if i just come out of my camera here is that as a ball because like in the next tutorial i'm going to show you how to create your spline and animate a ball along this surface here as the ball comes up if you don't select these polygons here it looks like it's in midair just for a fraction and then it's and it's onto the surface here so if i select these polygons here then i'm going to get some reflection and some shadows onto the ball so it looks like it's actually coming along a solid piece of geometry and we're going to be doing that in the next tutorial but for now i'm going to select all of these 
and I'm going to show you how that works when we put everything together. And I'm just going to hold down shift and I'm going to select all of these down here. And that's all the polygons I'm going to need. So I'm just going to press U and P for split. And now I have my polygons that I need. So I'm just going to take this Penrose Geo. I'm going to drop that into the archive. And I'm going to rename this Penrose Geo to face. Okay, and I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to make a couple of copies. I'm going to show you how this all fits together now. So we come into the camera. And on the first copy, I'm going to come to the coordinates. I'm going to say that I want this on the minus 90 on the H, minus 90 on the B, and 200 on the Y. OK, so now this fits together nicely. OK, so on the second copy, I'm just going to come to the coordinates. I'm going to say 90 on the P. 90 on B and minus 200 on the X. And now this all fits together. Okay. So we've got a small problem here. So this is what I'm going to be showing. The extra polygons aren't going to be showing. So if I just come out of the camera here, you can see exactly what's going on here. So everything fits together like so, but if I just come in here, just move this around. Just come to frame default. That's better there. Okay, so now you can see that when I spin around. This is the front base showing here, and you can see that this isn't being covered by any geometry. If I come into the camera here, this is sticking out like a sore thumb. So what I need to do is cut this corner off here. So if I just delete the second face here and I'm going to select the copy here and I'm going to use the loop selection, which is UL on the keyboard. And I'm just going to come into the edge mode, come in here and select this edge of my geometry and if I come out here you can see we've got this selection I'm going to right click I'm going to say edge to spline I'm just going to pull the spline out here so what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be using this spline as let's get rid of this face here I'm going to be using this spline as a guide to cut this corner off here so that we can remove these polygons Okay, so if I select the spline, come into point mode, you can see that I've got a lot of excess in my spline here. So I'm going to just use the rectangle selection here, and I'm just going to make a big selection of these points, and I'm going to delete them. And the same at the top here. I'm just going to delete these. So now we have a manageable spline here and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make sure that I have my face selected and let's come into polygon mode. You can stay in point mode if you want to, but I'm going to come into polygon mode and I'm going to use the line cut tool. So just open that up and with the face selected and the spline in the right position. So make sure that you're in the camera angle that you want before you actually do this. And if I hold down control and hover over that spline, I can just click it. And that's now cut everything down here. So I'm just gonna take that face line. I'm just gonna drop that into the archive and I'm going to come into, oh, I'm in polygon mode, that's fine. I'm just going to select the face here and I'm going to get the live selection tool. And you can see this is where the line has cut. And I'm just going to select all of these polygons here. 
And if I come in here, you can see that something's gone a little bit wonky here. And it doesn't matter how many times I do this in this project, it always does the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these polygons and we're going to come into point mode and you can see that there are two points here. So if I just select these two, this is the point that should be on the edge here. I need to get rid of this point here. So I'm just going to use the world tool again. So I'm just going to make sure that these are selected. Select the world tool and I'm going to make sure that I've got my world tool on the point that I want. So this is the one on the right. So I'm going to click that and now we have an it. Now we have a straight spline like so. And we are almost done. Okay. So if I just come back into model mode here and I'm just going to make a couple of copies of my face here and I'm going to select this first copy and again I'm going to do minus 90 on the H. Oops, minus 90 on the B and 200 on the Y we now have a perfect fit. So if we come right in here, because I had the tighter distribution of the points here on the curve, we almost have a perfect curve here, which is working well for us. So if I just turn on the display, grout shading with lines, you can see here, they're not matching perfectly, but we have an almost perfect curve here, okay? So the camera is going to be way back here. We're not going to see any imperfections. And I'm just going to turn the grout shading back on here. And I'm just going to take this face here, the second copy, and I'm going to say 90 on the P, 90 on the B, and minus 200 on the X there. And now we have this perfect Penrose impossible triangle here, which is looking really, really good. Okay, so what I need to do now is add some material and make this look even more interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to be using standard Cinema 4D materials. This will work with any version, with yours using Octane or Redshift, etc. We're just going to be using the default UVW in the material tag to make this work. Okay. I'm going to come into my material manager here. I'm going to double click and make a material and open this up. And I'm going to come into the color channel here and I'm going to select a surface and it's going to be checkerboard. Okay. So I'm going to leave this all as default here and I'm going to drop that onto my first face. So now we have this checkerboard on our surface and it doesn't look like a checkerboard. And I find that if you come into the material tag here and just come to the length of V, again, things look a bit different to previous versions of Cinema 4D, but nothing's changed. It's exactly the same. Okay. So I'm just going to come into length V and I'm going to say that this is 33.333. And now we have our checkerboard on here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to offset the V. So we're going to animate this like so. Okay. So I'm going to add some more keyframes to my timeline. So I'm going to say 360. Now make sure that I'm on frame zero. And I'm going to add a keyframe on the offset V. If I come to the 361st frame, which is 360, I'm going to say this is minus 100 because we want this to move the opposite direction here. And I'm just going to make a keyframe. So now if I play that, we can see that this material is animating along the surface like so.
and that's looking good there okay I don't want this to be slowing down and speeding up I just want this to be a constant rate so I'm just going to make sure that my keyframes are linear and in other versions of Cinema 4D you just need to right click come to animation and show F curve I'm just going to open up my dope sheet here and I'm going to come to my frame and I'm going to select frame all which is H on the keyboard and I'm going to select my keyframes and I'm just going to say this is linear like so so now when I play this this is at a constant rate this is animating around and you might see that little jump there I'm just going to close my dope sheet and you might see that little jump there that's because the last frame and the first frame are exactly the same so I'm just going to make this 359 so when we play this around it's a seamless loop okay so that's basically it so what we need to do now is I need to I want to take the material tag I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to drag and copy these onto each face here and now because I've put the animation on the original material tag this has now been copied onto each face and if I animate this you can see now we have our impossible triangle which baffles everyone and that's how you put together the impossible triangle okay so I'm going to be stopping this here and I'm going to be making another video I'm going to be showing you how to animate a ball along the faces of our geometry here and also how to create the spline and how to rotate the ball etc and also I'm going to be popping it into redshift I'm going to be showing you how I lit my scene and also we're going to be using crypto mat to take it into after effects and we're going to composite this all together so that's going to be for the next video I don't want to be sticking this all in one because otherwise it'd be a, like a really really long video and I've had a comment before or maybe a couple of comments that my videos are slightly long but I've always put these into chapters so it's easier to follow along so anyway so hopefully you enjoy this video and I shall see you in the next one so thanks for watching okay see you then bye I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and what I've shown you is going to be useful for you in the future. If you made anything using this technique then show your work, I'd love to see what you made. If you want to see my latest experiments and concepts then pop over to Almost Daily Render on Instagram. Don't forget to like, subscribe and tinker that bell for future content. And while you're here, you can check out my other content. And as always, any questions, comments then please leave them below. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.